Fateful Elephants, a true story of animals, people, and war. Written by Yukio Tsushia. Illustrated by Ted Lewin. The cherry blossoms are in full bloom at the Ueno Zoo. Their petals are falling in the soft breeze and sparkling in the sun. Beneath the cherry trees, crowds of people are pushing to enter the zoo on such a beautiful day. Two elephants are outside performing their tricks for a lively audience. While blowing toy trumpets with their long trunks, the elephants walk along large wooden logs. Not far from the cheerful square, there stands a tombstone. Not many notice this monument for the animals that have died at the Ueno Zoo. It is quiet and peaceful here, and the sun warms every corner. One day, an employee of the zoo, while tenderly polishing the stone, told me a sad story of three elephants buried there. Today, he said, there are three elephants in the zoo, but, year ago, but years ago, we had three different elephants here. Their names were John, Tonki, and Wainley. At that time, Japan was at war. Gradually, the war had become more and more severe. Bombs were dropped in Tokyo every day and night, like falling rain. What would happen if bombs hit the zoo? If the cages were broken and dangerous animals escaped to run wild through the city, it would be terrible. Therefore, by command of the army, all the lions, tigers, leopards, bears, and big snakes were poisoned to death. By and by, it came time for the three elephants to be killed. They began with John. John loved potatoes, so the elephant keepers mixed poisoned potatoes with the good ones when it was time to feed him. John, however, was a very clever elephant. He ate the good potatoes, but each time he brought a poisoned potato to his mouth with his trunk, he threw it to the ground. Kerplunk. As it seems there is no other way, the zookeeper said, we must inject poison directly into his body. A large syringe, the kind you see of Shasta horses, was prepared. But John's skin was so tough that the big needles broke off with a loud snap one after the other. When this did not work, the keepers reluctantly decided to starve him to death. Poor John died 17 days later. Then it was Tonki's and Wainley's turn to die. These two had always gazed at people with loving eyes. They were sweet and gentle-hearted. The zookeepers wanted so much to keep Tonki and Wainley alive that they thought of sending them to the zoo in Sedan, far north of Tokyo. What if bombs fell in Sedan? What if the elephants got loose and ran wild there? What would happen then? Tonki and Wanley, too, were doomed to be killed at the Ueno Zoo, just like all the other animals. The elephant keepers stopped feeding Tonki and Wanley. As the days passed, the elephants became thinner and thinner, weaker and weaker. Whenever a keeper walked by their cage, they would stand up, tottering as if to beg, Give us something to eat. Please give us water. Their small, loving eyes began to look like round, rubber balls in their drooping, shrunken faces. Their ears seemed too large for their bodies. The once big, strong elephants had become a sad shape. All this while, the elephant's trainer loved them as they were his own children. He could only pace in front of the cage and moan, You poor, poor, pitiful elephants. One day, Tonki and Wanley lifted their heavy bodies, staggered to their feet, and came close to their trainer. Squeezing out what little strength they had left, Tonki and Wanley made their appeal. They stood on their hind legs and lifted their front legs up as high as they could. Then, raising their trunks high in the air, they did their Benzaya trick. Surely, their friend would reward them with food and water as he used to do. The trainer could stand it no longer. Oh, Tonki, oh, Wainley, he wailed and dashed to the food shed. He carried food and pails of water to them and threw it at their feet. Here, he said, sobbing and clung to their thin legs. Eat your food, please. Drink your water. All of the other keepers pretended not to see what the trainer had done. No one said a word. The director of the zoo just sat very still, biting his lip and gazing at the top of his desk. No one was supposed to give the elephants any food. No one was supposed to give them any water. But everyone was hoping and praying that if the elephants could survive only one more day, the war might be over and the elephants would be saved. At last, Tonki and Wanley could no longer move. They just lay on their sides, hardly able to see the white clouds floating in the sky over the zoo. However, their eyes appeared clearer and more beautiful than ever. Seeing his beloved elephants die in this way, the elephant trainer felt as if his heart would break. He had no more courage to see them. All of the other keepers felt the same, and they too stayed away from the elephant cage. Over two weeks later, Tonki and Wanley were dead. Both died leaning against the bars of their cage with their trunks stretched high in the air, still trying to do their Benzaga trick for the people who once fed them. The elephants are dead. They're dead, screamed the elephant trainer as he ran to the office. He buried his head in his arms and cried, beating the desktop with his fist. 
The rest of the zookeepers ran to the elephant's cage and stumbled in. They took hold of Tonki and Winley's thin bodies, as if to shake them back to life. Everyone burst into tears, then stroked the elephant's legs and trunks in sorrow. Above them in the bright blue sky, the angry roar of enemy planes returned. Bombs began to drop on Tokyo once more. Still clinging to the elephant, the zookeepers raised their fists to the sky and implored, Stop the war! Stop the war! Stop all wars! Later, when the bodies of the elephants were examined, nothing was found in the washed tub-like stomachs, not even one drop of water. With tears in his eyes, the zookeeper finished his story. These three elephants, John, Tongi, and Wanley, are now resting peacefully under this monument. He was still patting the tombstone tenderly as the cherry blossoms fell in the grave like snowflakes.